وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلة Brothers and sisters, Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You've all heard um, the brother just mentioned that there's a prisoner called or referred to as 650. But it's important, I think, people f to recognize, for people to recognize how we even learnt that the existence of prisoner 650. And if I just explain to you that the Bagram detention facility is a place that still exists and even after Guantanamo will be closed, which I believe is impending, Bagram will still exist and remain as a detention center. In 2005, the same year that I was released from Guantanamo, four people escaped from Bagram. Four Muslim men, one an Iraqi, one a Kuwaiti, one a Saudi, and another a Syrian, escaped from Bagram. And they escaped in a way that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Because during the time when I was there, I saw somebody try to escape and he was killed. In front of my eyes, he was killed. And the brothers, when they escaped, they didn't return to try to go back home. Some of them had never been fighting against the Americans. They had no cause to. They were there living as muhajireen, as um, migrants, running away from oppression in their own lands. But now they joined the insurgency. And they were quite open about it. And they said, we will fight against the Americans for what they've done to people in this country. Whereas before they weren't too committed to that issue. So they didn't escape from Bagram in order that they could return home. They escaped from Bagram in order that they could join the fight. And one of the things that they did, one of the reasons why they joined the fight or rejoined the fight, was because of what they saw happen inside the Bagram detention facility. They saw, amongst many other things, amongst the tortures that were taking place against the men, that it was terrible, let alone what happened to prisoner 650. And it was these men who first ever brought about into the public conscience the existence of this sister who is not Afia Siddiqui and whose name still we don't know for sure. But that the fact that she existed was brought to public attention. And the way they did this, despite all of the evident fear of fugitives wanted by the world's most powerful military machine, doing interviews with Al Arabiya, television channel, explaining in detail how they escaped and the manner of their escape and what they witnessed whilst they were held in Bagram. And one of the things that they said was that they heard the screams of a woman daily. The screams of a Muslim woman daily being abused by American soldiers, some of whom were perverted. The same screams or similar screams I used to hear when I was in Bagram of a woman being abused. And I don't know to this day if it's the same woman, if she was the same woman, whether it was 650, whether it was somebody else. But I do know there was a woman present when I was there being tortured and interrogated. And the US military's foreign po or policy on this issue has always been denial. They've always said that there was no female prisoner in detention in Bagram or anywhere else, as if they wish us to believe that they have no detention policy for females, which is bizarre, considering we know that hundreds of females have been detained, at least in Iraq, and I'm confident that they would have a detention process for females also in Afghanistan, which is the hottest war zone that exists in the world right now. And one of the things the brothers mentioned about this sister, they may give a description of her. It wasn't simply that they said there was a woman there, it's propaganda, it, they're making it up. They actually made a description of what they saw and how they heard these things take place. One of the things they said was that this sister was a Pakistani woman and that she was a mother who'd been torn away from her children and that she was in her late to mid-30s 
mid to late 30s, and that she had lost her mental faculties, her ability to reason properly from all the screaming and from all the madness she was subjected to. And they said also that her number was 650. This is the first time I ever learnt that such a woman existed. Not from the International Committee of the Red Cross, not from Amnesty International, or even from caged prisoners, or from any human rights organization, not from the British or the Americans, did I hear of the existence of this woman. I didn't hear it from anybody other than these four fugitives, captives, Mujahideen, Asra, who came at great risk to their own selves, two of whom have been, as a result of that, re-identified. One was recaptured and one was killed, and two are still fighting. And these men out of the whole world came forward to speak about the case of this woman. And where was the rest of the ummah? So why does it have to be that the same men who take on the responsibility of hijrah, of jihad, of struggle, of imprisonment, of escape, of torture, of cruel, inhuman and degrading treatment, are the same ones who carry on their shoulders the huge burdens of this ummah while everybody else is asleep. Why is it the same people every time? The same people. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about them? Say about them? من المؤمنين رجال صدقوا ما أهد الله عليه فمنهم من قضى نحبه ومنهم من ينتظر وما بدلوا تبديلا. These men aren't terrorists. These men are people who defended the rights of ordinary Muslim women. They didn't go around invading people's countries. They didn't carry out suicide bombing attacks against individual civilians. They were oppressed and they were persecuted. And despite that persecution, they came along and Allah said of them. From amongst the believers are men who are truthful to their covenant with Allah. And amongst them are men who have gone no longer with us. And amongst them are men who are still there and they never changed one iota.